Welcome to Phoenix Explorer's first tutorial. Today we will be showing you how to start fires in wet and difficult conditions. Anybody can start a fire in good conditions, but it's the worst conditions where you will need it the most. In order to get your fire started, you're going to need some kind of tinder. Something that is highly combustible and will catch on fire very easily. It should not be something like dry grass or dry pine needles or leaves, dry leaves off the ground. It has to be something that contains some kind of resin that will easily combust. That's the kind of thing you find in birch bark, which is the most common uh, type of tinder that people have a chance to use when they're out starting a fire. Birch bark will burn even when it's very wet. So all you need to do is find a birch bark, a birch bark, a birch tree, and uh, it will almost always have some kind of loose birch bark on it that can be taken off very easily without actually damaging the tree. Another type of tree that people don't usually think of for uh, tinder coming from the bark is a cedar tree. The cedar, as you can see, is a coniferous tree. Uh, it doesn't have needles on it, but it has these uh, cedar leaves on it uh, as well. It's not the leaves that you would use, although they do have a lot of resin in them. Uh, it's the bark itself. So any place that you find a cedar tree like this, you're also likely to find some dead ones uh, from which you can just peel off some of the bark that comes off like this. And I'll show you in a second what you do to it in order to make your tinder. Once you've collected your dry cedar, the dead cedar bark, you need to find a stone, preferably with some sharp edges, and you're just going to take that stone and you're going to rub the inside of the bark with the stone in order to get these, this fibrous and very resinous and very combustible material. This is great fire starter. In some ways even better than birch bark. So you can see here I've got this nice fluffy fibrous material here. Once you get a bunch of the cedar shredded this way, you end up with a nice little nest of fibrous materials that will burn nicely by itself. You can see here, a small one here. Will burn well. continues to burn and if there's a little bit of a breeze it burns even better. However, it's going to work even better if you add some birch bark to it. You get birch bark like this, one of the things you want to do is you kind of want to peel it into its various layers so that the pieces you're working with are as thin as can be. Even birch bark when it's wet is kind of hard to light. It will light, but it's better if it's thin as you get more oxygen to it. So if you combine these things together here, see the layers coming off here, you can kind of peel them apart. If it's really old, it will come apart a lot less easily. But if you get a bunch of that together and you put it with your cedar. And then you light that. And you get quite the quite the little tinder bundle. There are two rules to making a fire. The first one is to use the right kind of wood, and the second one is to use the right size of wood. First thing we need to do is look at softwood coniferous trees and hardwood deciduous trees. This is an example of a softwood coniferous tree, 
Uh, all coniferous trees and softwood trees have needles and cones. This is an example of hardwood. All the leaves fall off in the winter time and actual tree names would be maple or birch. There are two things that you need to remember when starting a fire in wet conditions. First is, your fire needs to be hot enough to dry off your other firewood. Second is, your fire needs coals because without them your fire is unsustainable. After you prepare your tinder bundle, you're going to want to collect small sticks about pencil, pencil lead thick until you have about a handful. That's to keep the tinder bundle going and move on. So this is softwood. You're going to want to collect a lot of it and it burns really well. It keeps the fire hot so then you can move on to hardwood. You should get it off the bottom of the trees. The stuff's almost always dry no matter how wet it is outside because of how thin it is. So this isn't enough. You're going to need quite a bit more than this to get, get the fire going, but in this case. Uh, once you've collected your smaller stuff, uh, from the same source you will collect wood that is pencil thick size. So we have small uh, pieces here that will start the fire and get it burning hotter. Then we move over to some medium sized pieces which will continue to build up the heat. And then you do actually need some relatively larger pieces to keep it going. Just remember that all this softwood, when you burn it, it'll only turn to ash. You want coals for your fire and you get coals from hardwood. Again, we're trying to find hardwood that is off of the ground so that it stays dry. Even if it rains the previous night, it'll dry a lot quicker. Anything that's going to be on the ground is going to be completely rotted. Uh, you need your hardwood after softwood because hardwood is essential for making coals. So you want to start with the smallest part of the hardwood that will go with your softwood kindling. Like so. After you start getting all the little stuff, like what Max is doing over there, you need to move on to the bigger stuff. If it's still wet, don't worry about it, you can chop it in half and it'll actually dry off a lot quicker beside the fire that is already going. While you're building your fire, you want to start off with your small softwood, then move to your small hardwood, then move to your medium softwood, then medium hardwood, large softwood, large hardwood, and then you can get larger logs like this for hardwood. Uh, just remember that when you're putting stuff on your fire, whatever you're going to put on next, put it close to the fire so it can dry off. The important thing to remember is that this is not enough firewood to sustain a fire for a long time. Uh, we're, we only have this much for purposes of the video, but when you're out and you actually need to survive, this is not enough firewood. You want to collect a lot of wood before you light your fire. So when you're, if the wood is too wet or you're worried that it's too wet and it won't dry off quick enough, you can take a knife or a hatchet and you can actually just put it at the top and then just lightly tap on it to split it in half. By doing that, it'll allow the wood to dry a lot quicker by the fire. If you don't have a knife and a hatchet to do it or a proper knife with an indent, you can just use a hatchet or a single knife and hit the top with a piece of wood large enough to actually knock it down. There are two key things you need to remember when lighting a fire in wet conditions. First, always use your existing fire to dry off the firewood that you're going to put on next. If not, your fire will die down and go out. Always think of the next step. The second thing you need to remember when creating a fire in these wet conditions is that you need to always think about creating a bed of coals and adding, continuously adding hardwood to the fire. We're using the TP or half TP design for our fire. This allows for maximum airflow. Your fire needs lots of oxygen in order for it to burn hot. So with this specific fire, we're going to be using some artificial fire starter, um, but you can use any other kind of natural fire starter. It's 
for this fire, we are using a lean-to or half TP, which allows for maximum airflow. Okay, once we get the fire lit and it starts to build up, it's all about timing, adding everything else on. You want to just slowly put the fire. If you put it too soon, you could smother the fire. If you put it too late, there might not be enough heat for the, the wood to dry out, especially in wet conditions. We're slowly moving everything in from the outside, and we're trying to dry it off at the same time. Everything here is not just for convenience. Once you get the fire going and it's built up nicely, like this one here, you want to be alternating between softwood and hardwood and slowly and progressively moving it in so that the fire will keep building up but also build a bed of coals at the same time. To get your fire started, you will want to make sure that you keep adding hardwood. Hardwood will make coals and once you have coals, your fire will not go out. It's always good to add dry wood that has been drying out around it to the fire when it's burning strongly and not when it's beginning to die down. You may not get it built back up again. So we didn't have the worst conditions working here. We, wood was actually relatively dry. It rained a bit last night, but... But the ideas that we presented in the videos will work for if you have wet wood. Make sure that your, when you leave your fire, it is always dead out. Thanks for watching our first video. I hope you now know how to make a fire. I am the god of hellfire! And I bring you fire!